Klaassen plays to Grealish, Grealish to Daily Blade, and he's going to progress with the ball. By progressing with the ball, that means Grealish, that is a signal for Grealish to say, hey, come back and cover me. He plays it to Klaus and Klaus finds Tadic in space, Bergwise, and what a goal. Just in case some of you guys have missed it in the title, we did achieve a 100% win rate whilst managing Ajax. We are reinventing Ajax tactically, so that is the purpose of these videos. We are going to be selecting a team and then try and reinvent them a little bit by playing some nice football. Well, I say nice football. That was the purpose at Ajax. Depending on the team that we do select in the future, that can all change. But the point in these videos, we're trying to create some unusual tactics with some unusual concepts and well try and be successful as we did with Ajax so let's get stuck in to this video. If you are new or you haven't yet don't forget to hit like subscribe and leave a comment as well if you have any tactical recommendations. Welcome back you lovely viewers and before we get stuck in looking at the results and how we achieve this 100% win rate at Ajax to be fair we didn't get 100% win rate in the cup competitions we got knocked out in the Champions League fairly early but that isn't the point in this video before we do get stuck in I mean the reason why I selected this formation that we are going to be using and this style of play is because I was watching Ajax yesterday play against Liverpool and I noticed something very very interesting I did notice that the holding midfielder and the centre back were kind of interchanging swapping positions sometimes the holding midfielder came into centre back and that centre back went into holding midfield position and that is why I got the idea for for this tactic well that's why I got the idea from for this tactic this video just like my many other videos are created to help you tactically for you to grab some ideas as well so so not necessarily for you to download plug and play you can do that if you want of course the download link is available in the description below but of course the main main purpose of these videos are for you to grab some tactical ideas and then well hopefully you can create some banging tactics yourself but now it's time to look into the results and as you can see in the era of visa it's all green it's all green mainly because we won every single game but also actually also before we go any further i do want to show you you my game status because i did get a comment in the comment section in the video that i posted yesterday about me cheating i must have reloaded a hundred times or i've must have changed everybody's players to current ability 200 so i'm just gonna look at the game status just so you guys can see it's not being saved and reloaded hundreds of times i mean i've only saved this game this saved file six times it did start last night and i completed it this morning but also you can look at some of the profiles of my players constant so everybody is on their normal attributes there's nobody on current ability 200 or anything nonsense like that so for an example let me just go for goals dusan tadic 44 goals you can see that is dusan tadic profile we can look at steven burgas as well 29 goals 14 assists but as we can see this is his profile then again we are ajax so we are expected to do very very well in every divise the champions league and the europa league mm, not so good not so good i mean we were unlucky in a few games so this game here against manchester city we did get daily blind sent off in the sixth minute and then manchester city scored in the 91st and 92nd minute as well without that goal or without those goals we would have qualified in the champions league into the knockout stages but well we didn't and then we got into the europa league and then i mean we got manchester united in the knockout stages yeah but looking at the competitions on the whole in the era de vise ajax on top playing 34 winning 34 with a goal difference of 98 and a points tally of 102 in the champions league we got seven points so maybe if we didn't beat manchester city they would have been on 10 we would have been on 10 it would have went to head to head but then we should have beaten juve at home or at least got a point as well in that game in the europa league we got knocked out in the second knockout round like we've just seen in a total becker cup we came runners up we lost to ps v in the final if we look at this final i mean very harsh we were the better side on the day but psv took the trophy home and in the johan Cruyff cup we were the winners at the very start beating psv three goals to two we did score an amazing 114 goals in the eredivisie we had the most shots for the fewest shots against the best pass completion but we also had the highest possession 63 percent average possession which is absolutely fantastic most clean sheets ajax fewest conceded 
Ajax. Now looking at the player stats, Dusan Tadic, top goal scorer for the top assist. We have Mohamed Kudos, Bergais and Wijnal all in the top eight. Looking at the most shots for Lucas Acampos, one of our inside forwards. Hint, hint. Steven Bergais and Dusan Tadic also in that list. Steven Bergais and Dusan Tadic joined with Man of the Match awards. I mean, he was very, very good for us. Most key passes, again, you can see his name there. Dusan Tadic in the top eight. Looking at the clean sheets, it is our goalkeeper and the few is conceded it is our goalkeeper squad stats Dusan Tadic with 44 goals in all competitions Steven Bergas with 29 Lucas Ocampos with 26 very good player Steven Bergeron with 13 goals in 18 starts now looking at the highest assist in this team Steven Bergas with 14 assists Lucas Campos with 14 Mohamed Kudos with 14 Owen Wijnal with 13 and Dusan Tadic with 12 now heading over to the data hub looking at the pass map now this is key what you're seeing here between number 21 and number two this hair this little position in here is very very key to what we want to do so when you so when we do go back to the tactic screen please keep that in mind looking at the xg table as well i mean expected goals 100 we overperformed by 13 expected goals against 24.4 we overperformed by minus eight and the expected points 83.5 and we overperformed by 18. Looking at the team attacking Polygon, we were by far the best team going forward. And looking at the team defending Polygon, we were also, I mean, we were very, very solid defensively. And you notice that with us conceding the fewest goals and with the most clean sheets. But enough of the results. Now let's go to the tactic and let's break it down. Let's have a look at why or how we got this 100% win rate in the Eredivisie. So originally the tactic did start off as a 4-2-3-1 but we moved some players around and we made it funky and well this is what we've done. So we moved one of the central defenders bang into the middle and then we've just dragged this central midfielder down into the holding midfielder position and then voila this is kind of the awkward or odd shape that we have and you will have noticed this huge gap but we're trying to cover that with the holding midfielder and as he does cover that we do want our central defender to then push up and there we have our holding midfielder and a central defender changing positions. Positional rotation involves specific patterns of play to disrupt an opponent's defensive setup. It is a method of dismarking the opposition to disrupt an opponent's marking scheme. Suppose our centre back cannot find a pass forward as the opposition's marking scheme is well set up. In that case, the only way to undo this marking scheme is through a bit of movement and rotation. Firstly, there needs to be at least one player beyond the opposition midfield. If playing with a midfield pair, this could mean one midfielder drops deep to offer a pass option to their back line whilst the other pushes higher and looks to access the space between the opposition midfield and their defence. Doing this forces the opposition midfield to constantly be aware of a player making a run in the space behind. This can then allow our holding midfielder or central defender to provide a line breaking pass or what we want to create space for our centre back to progress with the ball with our holding midfielder covering his position. The aim is to drag the opposition midfield out of shape and lead to even more good passes. So that was just a mini analysis of our tactic, but also a mini analysis of how positional interchanging works. So now focusing back on our tactic in order for us to create that positional interchange between the centre back and the holding midfielder, what we want is to change that holding midfielder's role to half back and then our centre back to a libero. And now what we have is a libero who on the ball is going to look to progress and move forward, but in possession our halfback is going to be looking to drop deep and now looking at the rest of the midfielder shape our central midfielder we are going to be using him as a Mazala so when that's going to be looking to find spaces and making sure that they are occupying the opposition's midfield trying to move them about again trying to create space for either the libero to bring the ball forward or the halfback to find a line breaking pass the libero can also find a line breaking pass forward and then what we want from our attacking midfielder is just to be an attacking midfielder on support again someone that's going to be roaming around looking for space in order to collect the ball so we can progress the ball through our central areas and that basically wraps up the magic in the central areas we do have a libero as our central defender we do have a halfback coming back into this little area so he's going to drop deep and then our libero on the ball will look to push further forward we do have a mazala looking to disrupt the opposition's midfield shape and then we have our attack
attacking midfielder just behind our striker. And now for a little bit of magic, we are going to look at the completed version. Voila, here is the completed version in goal. We do have a sweeper keeper on attack. Right back is a fullback on support, dribbling more, cutting inside with the ball and sitting more narrow. The left back is a fullback on attack, dribbling more and running wide with the ball. Whilst our central defenders is a central defender, playing it safe in possession. And then we do have our libero, dribbling more, tackling harder and marking tighter. Now for the halfback, he has no added instructions, the Mazala. He's going to be taking more risks, trying to provide some good passes is in the attacking area but he's also going to be dribbling less as well so we do want to kind of balance his ball retention he can be risky when looking for a pass but when he does have the ball we want him to dribble less and also look for that pass first mentality and our attacking midfielder on support also has to take more risk instruction added now looking on the flanks we have two inside forwards doing the exact same things they also have identical instructions holding up the ball shooting less often and sitting more narrow and lastly we do have a full stand up top with no added instructions now let's move over to the team instructions the mentality is attacking we are looking to play in the opposition's final third or just in the opposition's half that is where we want to dominate play therefore i felt that attacking mentality was the best way to go the attacking width is set to fairly wide we haven't changed that though you can change it to fairly narrow i was playing with it during the season i mean i didn't really notice a big difference i do prefer fairly out wide we are going to be playing out from the back because we are a heavy heavy possession based side meaning the passing directness is on much shorter retaining the possession and then the tempo is on much higher we do want to take advantage of any any space that we have created in the final third low crosses and work the ball into the box in transition when we do lose the ball we are going to counter press try and win that ball back instantly when the possession has been won we have no added instructions so some players may look to hold their shape some players may look to go on a counter attack for an example the two inside forwards the goalkeeper in possession will look to distribute the ball to the center backs and take short kicks this is kind of key in trying to get that positional interchange we want the ball to go to the libero as often as possible so he can dribble with it more and that halfback can drop deep lastly out of possession much higher line of engagement a higher defensive line we are using the offside trap but you can take this off if you want and the defensive width is set to standard trigger press much more often and that is about it you would think to use prevent short goalkeeper distribution but there was two issues that i noticed firstly was the two inside forwards kept marking the center backs and that left the opposition's fullback free and then that just allowed the AI to keep playing it to the full backs in space and also we don't want the AI to constantly kick the ball long because well you would notice this big gap in our central defense prevent short goalkeeper distribution may force the AI to kick the ball long but we don't necessarily want them to kick the ball long all the time we do want to force mistakes but we also don't want to play into their hands and exploit the central space in our defense and that there wraps up the tactic yes it does and this is the rdf ajax reinvention the four three one one three one that's what we're going to call it that's what we're going to go with and now we can look at some fantastic football So something that we're looking at right now is minor. It's not something that's going to blow your mind away, but it is what we are looking at. So Wrench has the ball. He is our libero. Grillish is our halfback. And what we're going to be looking at is kind of Wrench is looking with the ball to progress with it. And then Grillish is looking to drop deep into that central back area. And that is kind of our two defensive players there interchanging their positions. So he has the ball. Wrench has the ball. He looks to progress with the ball. And now if we look at Grillish, he's just kind of holding his position in this little center back area and this is kind of now a back four with timber grillich alvarez and blint and then we now have wrench as our holder midfielder whereas grillich is our actual holder midfielder and wrench is our central defender so as play progresses a little bit you can see grillich is still looking to drop deep into that central defense area whilst our libero is still looking to push a little bit higher up so if we go back just a little bit you will have noticed that the opposition striker is actually marking our halfback 
back and in doing so is actually freeing up space for our libero to move the ball forward and as play progresses a little bit Kramer starts to engage in our libero our libero passes it forward drops off a little bit and now Grealish and our libero are just in acres of space in case we need to play the ball backwards in which we do we play the ball backwards Grealish has time and space to pick out a pass he plays it to Bergwijs he plays it back to Tadic out on that flank and look it just creates space for players in position and we can create a chance just like that one so that's kind of the thought process between the centre back and the half back. Now we can look at some of the beautiful goals that Ajax did score. So here's a game against Feyenoord. The goalkeeper kicks it long and luckily Alvarez sweeps up and collects the ball. Here's Kudos. Nice football in the centre of the part of Compass. Plays it through. Well, goes through and puts the ball into the net and that made it 1-0 to Ajax as Daily Blind looking for the ball over the top to Acampos. He breaks through. He just dings the goalkeeper 2-0 to Ajax. So this game had a little bit more goals in it. It ended 8-0 to Ajax. Tadic scoring a penalty in the opening four minutes. A compost with the ball here. Plays it to Alvarez. Burgos. Alvarez, lovely ball to Tadic. And that is his second goal of the game. 2-0 to Ajax. Timber brings the ball forward. Grealish, oh, let me go back. Let me go back. Because we did see Timber in space on the ball as well. And he was the libero in this game. So if we do go back, you will know it's Alvarez here, the halfback. And here is Timber on the ball. As we wanted to say, or as we mentioned a little earlier, Alvarez is now being marked. And this is actually creating space for Timber to play that line breaking pass into midfield. He plays it to Tadic and plays it back to Timba. Timba is now driving forward and you would notice that Alvarez has now swapped positions with him. We have gone back to again a back four with the right back here, the centre back Alvarez, centre back Daily Blin and the left back Wiginal. But Timba is actually the centre back and not Alvarez. So some nice positional interchange in there. Grilich plays the ball to Bergwijn. He drives a little bit wide and then there's Tadic's hat trick in the opening 15 minutes. Now for the fourth goal, our goalkeeper has the ball, plays it to Daily Blint. He kicks it long, which is not the plan, but it falls to a compass and he dinks it over the goalkeeper and it is 4-0. Now for the fifth goal, Wiznal, Grilich on the ball, Daily Blint. I have probably butchering a lot of these names. Ocampos and it is now 5-0. Is it 5? I'm losing count here. I'm losing count, but here's Grilich on the ball, Ocampos... Oh, what a finish in the top corner. It is now something nil. Now for the, I believe this is the seventh goal. I believe Ocampos is through now. He's going to pull it back. Plays it to Steven Burge, right? And there it is. Another, a lot of these goals are clear-cut opportunities as well. It's not long shots or moments of brilliance. A lot of those are, a lot of the, oh, that's a moment of brilliance. That one was a moment of brilliance. So this game ended 3-0 to Ajax, away to FC20. Tadic scoring again, the opening goal with a penalty and I've, I've sorry I've seen it again I'm sorry people I, I've seen it again here is Daily Blint our libero and our halfback here is Grilich they've actually combined here as well Clarkson plays to Grilich Grilich to Daily Blint and he's going to progress with the ball by progressing with the ball that means Grilich that is a signal for Grilich to say hey come back and cover me he plays it to Klaus and Klaus and finds Tadic in space Bergwijs and what a goal what a goal from the centre backs as well and now for the third and final goal of this match Tadic out wide Wiznal tries to put the ball oh what an awful header I mean that was an awful goal that was just an awful goal defensively things didn't always go to plan in this game we actually conceded two but we did score four and this is the first one in the first minute Grealish oh what a goal what a finish and I believe this is now Feyenoord's goal so they do break through in sort of in that area there Idrissi I mean that's a very very good goal very good ball control there as well Daily Blint, Rens, Grilic, Ocampos, finds Tadej, Bergwijs and there is the second goal for Ajax that is now 2-1 to Ajax but now Ajax's third goal it's another penalty for Dusan Tadic and now looking at Feyenoord's second goal here's Danilo Pereira and again they did exploit that little space in our central defence and that is their second goal of the game but we did wrap up the game with the fourth one so that goal was our only consolation it seems Clausen he hits it at the goalkeeper but the rebound falls to Acampos and that wraps up the game but that also wraps up this video I hope you guys have enjoyed it which team should I do next I do have some ideas I do have have Juve in my mind next um I think that's it for now 
It's Juve. Also, one of the Red Bull teams as well. One of the Red Bull teams. I'll give you some clues. It's not Salzburg and it's not Leipzig. <laughs> but I'll see you guys soon. Don't forget, if you are new and you haven't yet, make sure you are subscribed. Leave a comment of what you would like to see next. But also, like this video. Shout out to my Patreons. I'll see you guys soon. Stay safe. God bless.